जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जान बल्ला गिरीबर धारी जय गोपी जान बल्ला गिरीबर धारी जय जशोदन दन ब्रज जन रंजन जशोदन दन ब्रज जन रंजन जमुना तेरा बन <coughs> जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी <coughs> ऐसा प्रभुपाद की परिणाम संकीर्तन की गौर प्रमाण ओम ज्ञान तिरंध्य ज्ञानंजन शलाकया चक्षुरोन्मील जैन तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित जैन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददा सोपदातिक वंदे अहम श्रीगुर श्रीजुतापदकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवांग्च श्रीरूप साग्रजात सहगण रघुनाथ नितंत सजीव साधुत सवधूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सहगण ललिता श्री विशाखा नितंशाकूभ कृपा सिंधु भयच पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवभ्यो नम 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 वम विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामीने नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष सुन्नवादी पाश्चात्यशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद्रियदैत गदाधर श्रीवासादीशी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नारायण नमस्कृत नरं चैव नरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तत जय मधुरात्मक करोति बाचल पंगुल हैते गिरी जत्कृपातम वंदे परमानंदमाधव श्रीगुरुदीन तरिण श्रीचैतन्यश्वर नमस्कार 
you have clock there, clock, you see? But that clock is covered with the plant. So, <laughs> better we move afterwards. <laughs> the speaker cannot see, see that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll hear from Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, on the subject matter, Advent of Lord Krishna. So today we'll read from this words of the end of the first chapter. So Kansa becomes satisfied by the action of Vasudeva. He was surprised to see Vasudev keeping his promise and being compassionate upon him, being compassionate upon him and pleased, he began to speak as follows. My dear Vasudev, you need, you need not present this child to me. I am not in danger from this child. I have heard that the eighth child born of you and Devaki will kill me. Why should I accept this child unnecessarily? You can take him back. When Vasudev was returning home with his firstborn child, although he was pleased by the behavior of Kansa, he could not believe in him because he knew that Kansa was uncontrolled. An atheistic person cannot be firm in his word of honor. One who cannot control the senses cannot be steady in his determination. The great politician Chanakya Pandit said, never put your trust in a diplomat or in a woman. Those who are addicted to unrestricted sense gratification can never be truthful, nor can they be trusted with any faith. At that time, the great sage Narad came to Kansa. He was informed of Kansa's becoming compassionate to Vasudev and returning his firstborn child. Narad was very anxious to accelerate the descent of Lord Krishna as soon as possible. <clears throat> he therefore informed Kansa that that personalities like Nanda Maharaj and all the cowherd men and girls and the wives of cowherd men in Vrindavan. And on the other side, Vasudev, his father Sureshan, and all his relatives born in the family of Brishni of the Yaduj dynasty were preparing for appearance of the Lord. Narad warned concert to be careful of the friends and well wishers and all the demigods taking birth in those families. Kansa and his friends and advisors were uh, all demons. Demons are always afraid of demigods. After being thus informed by Narad about the appearance of demigods in different families, Kansa at once becomes alert. He understood that since the demigods had already appeared, Lord Vishnu must be coming soon. He at once arrested his both brother-in-law Vasudev and Devaki and put them behind prison bars. Within the prison, shackled in iron chains, Vasudev and Devaki gave birth to a male child year after year. And concert, thinking each of the babies to be the incarnation of Vishnu, killed them one after another. He was practically afraid of the eighth child, but after the visit of Narad, he came to the conclusion that any child might be Krishna. Therefore, it was better to kill all the babies who took birth of Devakis and Vasudev. This action of Kans Kansa is not very difficult to understand. There are many instances in the, dynas in the history of the world, uh, world of persons in royal order who have killed father, brother, our whole family and friends for the satisfaction of their ambitions. There is nothing astonishing about this, for the demoniac can kill any one of their, uh, for their nefarious ambitions. 
Kansa was made aware of his previous birth by the grace of Narada. He learned that he, in his previous birth, he was a demon of name Kalanemi, and that he was killed by Vishnu. Having taken his birth in the Bhoja family, he decided to become the deadly enemy of Yadu dynasty. Krishna was going to take birth in that family, and Kansa was very much afraid that he would be killed by Krishna, and just as he was killed in his last birth. He first of all imprisoned his father Ugrasen because he was the chief king among the Yodu, Bhoja and Andhak dynasties and he also occupied the kingdom of Surasena, Vasudev's father. He declared himself the king of all such places. Thus end the Bhakti Vedanta purport of first chapter of Krishna, advent of uh, Lord Krishna. So, many interesting points are there. <coughs> Kansa was very sur surprised to see Vasudeva keeping his promise. Because Vasudeva promised when Kansa was trying to kill Devaki, then Vasudeva tried to pacify him in a different way, in a religious way, uh, ethical way, different way, nothing worked, then Kansa said, okay. Whatever child will take birth, I will hand over to you. How to speak of eighth child, each child you can kill. So, consort took it nicely, very good proposal. But when the first child was brought, the first child name was Kirtiman. All six children's names are there. Then Kansa, out of affection, he said, no, no, I will not kill this. So, Kansu was very impressed that Vasudeva keeping his promise. This sounds very great. That Vasudeva is a very great ideal person because he kept his promise. But Vasudeva said, I will bring all children to you. But what he did when Krishna came, did he bring that too? <laughs> then he hidingly took I. That means when it comes to Krishna, you don't follow any rules, regulations. Sarva dharman paritejya mahamekam saranam braja. Yes, all moral activities, all religious activities, everything can be sacrificed uh, for the pleasure of Krishna. So, these children, here it has been stated that Kansa took birth in Bhajabansa. Kansa is known as son of uh, Ugrasena. Actually, he was not the son of Ugrasena. He was son of a demon. One day, Ugrasena's wife was playing ball on the roof of the building. That time, a demon was flying in the sky. His name is Drumila. So, he picked up wife of Ugrasena and he associated with Ugrasena's wife there is where this concert took birth. That's why his another name is Durmila Nandana. Though everybody thinks that he is a son of Ugrasana, but it is not true, he is Durmila Nandana, son of a demon. And as Prabhupada has mentioned here, in his previous life, he was Kalanemi. The Kalanemi demon, he had uh, six sons. And all of them, once they decided to go to forest and do severe austerities to get a boon, so they can become immortal. So when Hiranyakashipu came to know these things, then he became very angry. That how can you do? Oh, that my, my permission, you are going to become immortal. So I curse you. You will be killed by your father. So that is the reason why the Kalanami, he took birth as Kansa and all the Devaki children, they were the children's sons of Kansa in previous life. They were demons. That's why they are known as Sat Garbhasura, Asura means a demon. Sat, the six demons. They took birth and Kansa killed his own sons when they took birth. 
and also in purport, I think Bhagavatam purport this has been mentioned. That these six children that Kalana gave birth, they were the son of Marichi to that previous birth. Then they laughed at Brahma when Brahma was running after his own daughter. They laughed at him. So Brahma cursed that you all take birth as a demons. Then they, they took birth as son of Kalanami. Then again they were cursed by Hiranyakasipu. Then they took birth of Devaki to be called by Kansa. So like this, <coughs> Vedic literature is very complicated, you know. So many things related, related, related. <laughs> very bewildering also. Just like the Narad Mani. What he is doing? What is his business? <laughs> he is a sadhu baba. <laughs> he should remain like sadhu. But sometimes he does very strange activities. Just like he, just see, when the marriage ceremony of Devaki and Vasudev, Kansa was riding the chariot. Everything would happen peacefully, nothing, there is no problem. The Naraj is the one who created all the problems. When Kansa so affectionately riding the chariot of Devaki Vasudev, then all these demigods, they declared, unseen sound vibration said, because demigods become very worried. If Kansa become compassion like this, friendly to Devaki Vasudev, then Krishna will not come. They are the one who told unseen sound vibration, vibration that Kansa, so affectionately you are riding the, this Devaki Vasudev, the, the eighth son will be the cause of her death. And here also we see Kirtiman, the first child, was released by Kansa. Everything would move smoothly, no problem. But when Kansa became compassionate, then again demigods become very worried. If he become compassion like this, then Krishna will not come to kill him. Then Naradmani came. Then Naradmani said, ah, Oh Kansa, what are you doing? It's a big mistake we are committing. Why don't you kill this child? No, no, his first child, eight children. <laughs> then, no, 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 you are doing great wrong. I was flying in the sky, in Sumeru mountain. I heard the, all the demigods having meeting. And they were discussing, they will all take birth in this family. So who knows? Who is, is it? Vishnu is one of the demigod. Demigod, we don't say demigod, but he's in that devata also, he's the main devata called us. So he gave, I have not read any book, but uh, in TV I have seen Rama, that uh, Krishna series. Narada is saying, Kansa, you are saying eighth child, eighth child. Then uh, Narada Muni showed his finger. Which one is the fifth finger, tell me. <laughs> he told Kansa, which one is the fifth finger? If you count from this side, one, two, three, four, five. This is fifth. One, two, three, four, five. This is fifth. So don't believe that. <laughs> you must kill. So Kansa is like, actually, when Krishna, Balaram took birth, they are growing uh, in Nandaga. Narada Muni is the one who informed Kansa. That uh, son, Nanda Mar, Goding Nanda Maharaj, he is not just the Nanda son. He is Devaki Vasudeva son. He revealed that to Kansa. Then only Kansa becomes so notorious and brought Krishna to kill. So this is the business of Narad Muni. <laughs> and it reminds me in Ramayana also, because it is not only demons they suffer, demigods they also suffer a lot. <laughs> demigods also sometimes the Demoniac power becomes so powerful, they attack heavenly planets. Demigods have to leave heaven. They have to hide behind the bushes. When Ravan was ruling the earthly planet, Sorga, Martha, Patal, everything, that time it has been mentioned, he had engaged great demigods like Indra to cut grass for his horses. I hope Devaraj Indra will not become angry upon me to hear this, but that is what it says. And he has Brihaspati, 
Vriyaspati was engaged as tuition teacher to his children. And you know certain Sanishar, Sanishar is a very dangerous personality. All Hindus are very afraid of Satan, Sanishar. And what was his situation? Any of you know? What Sanishar was used? No? The most ferocious, dangerous personality, Ravana was so powerful, he used him as his footmat. If that is the situation of these demigods, <laughs> devatas, they are the controller of the heavenly activities. And who are we when we go to heaven planets? No. So that certain uh, Sanishar was used as a footmat. <laughs> Narada Muni came. My Guru Mahasala Jayaputka Maharaj was telling, I don't know where he got it. <laughs> See, this uh, Ravan had put Nara, uh, Sanish face down, and on his back he was putting his feet. Narada Muni came. Oh, Ravan, very good, very good. You are giving hard time to his demigods. I'm very happy. No? But uh, you have put uh, Sonny's face down, putting your feet on his back. That is not so good. You turn him over. You put your feet on his belly. Push your feet on his belly. He will suffer more. That is very good. But actually, Naradamani, he wanted to trick Ravan. Like he tricked. Kansa, because in India they have a belief, they believe if anybody upon whom the Sonny will look upon, that person will be destroyed. Because so Sonny was looking down, Ravana was growing. So Narada Muni tricked. No, 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 you turn him over, put your feet on his belly, but same time Sonny will look upon the Ravanas. <laughs> so Ravana Demoniac Buddha did not understand. He turned over. Maybe he's pushing his belly, but the sun he looked, then Ravana has finished. The point is, there are so many instances like this, that Narad, he does, but for the service of Lord Krishna, uh, he's doing like this. This Bhojabansa also mentioned here, here Prabhupada has mentioned, therefore, uh, this uh, within the prison, uh, the Devaki Vasudeva, mm. Here it has been stated, he therefore informed Kansa that personalities like Nanda Maharaj and all the cowherd men and girls and wives of the cowherd men in Vrindavan and on the other side, Vasudeva, his father, Surasena and all his relatives born in the family of Brishni. So it clearly describes the relationship between Nanda and Vasudeva. Apparently, it looks like the two different family. With Nanda Maharaj, he is a Vaishya family, and Vasudev, he is Kshatriya family. But here, from this, we can understand actually they are both from the same family. They are same from Jaddu Bansa, the family of Brishni. So, in that family, there is a personality called Deva Midha. So, King Deva Midha. He had two wives, one wife from Vaishya family and one wife from uh, Kshatriya family. So then their children, the children from the wife of Vaishya family took birth, they become Vaishya. The children that took birth from the wife who came from Kshatriya family, they become Kshatriya. So the king Devamida, a Vaisa wife, so Parjana Maharaj took birth from him. And as a Kshatriya wife, King Surasana took birth from him. So from Surasana, Vasudeva took birth uh, from Surasana. Then uh, from Parjana Maharaj, he had five children Up, uh, uh, Upananda, Abhinanda, Nanda, Nandana, and Sunanda. So Nanda Maharaj came. So in this way, if we see, the Nanda Maharaj and Vasudev, they are from the same family. They are not from the different family. So that is what Prabhupada is saying here, that uh, all his relatives born in the family of Brishni, of the Jodhu dynasty, are preparing for the appearance of the Lord. So both family are the same. That's when, when uh, Gargamuni, they gave 
the name to Balaram, that time he mentioned his name is Sankarsan because he will bring two families together, their originally uh, from Devamedha's time. So in this way we see that Krishna's birth, his appearance is very mysterious, very mysterious. The first mystery is, the first mystery, very bewildering subject matter, what to speak of among the common men's, even intellectuals, most transcendentalist spiritualists, Krishna's birth is very uh, bewildering in the sense, how the Param Brahma, who is Aja, Aja means has no birth, Vedic literature clearly says, that uh, Param Brahma has no birth, but the how it takes birth, that itself is very bewildering and very mysterious also. And Prabhupada is saying, when Vedic literature says that Param Brahma is Aja, he never takes birth, that refers, refers to the spiritual world. In Golak Vrindavan, he never takes birth. So that is the reason why it has been told Aja. But in material world, he takes birth, but how he takes birth, Krishna himself has clarified using the same word, Aja. He is telling, I am Param Brahma. Arjuna has admitted, Param Brahma, Param Dhamam, Pavitram, Paramam Bhavan. And Krishna is saying, I am Aja. But Aja Apisan Abhayatma Bhutanang Ishwar Apisan Prakriti Swang Adhisthaya Sambhavami Atma Maya. So this is very important subject matter, should be clear to people. Sambhavami Atmaya. Krishna very simple way saying, Aja Api, even if I am unborn, but still I manifest myself. Aja Api San Abhayatma, Abhaya, Atma, uh, Bhutanam Ishwara, uh, so still Sambhavami Atmaya, by my Yogamaya potency, I manifest Nahang Prakasa Sarvasya Yogamaya Samabritam. So it defies the arguments of Mayavadi, Nirakarvadis that uh, Krishna, Rama, Narayan, they all came from Nirakar to Sakara. Krishna saying, No, I'm eternally existing, past times going on, but behind the scene. That's a Bhagavatam also saying. It has been described that uh, uh, he is revealed apabritam sattam visuddham vasudeva sabditam. What is happening? Why is not seen? Why is covered? By what he is covered? He is there everywhere. He is within everyone's heart. He is everywhere. When Hiranyakasup asked, Is your God in this pillar? What Prahlad said? Huh? If I will ask you, is in God this pillar, what will you say? Yes or no? Are you seeing that? Have you seen that? And you are bluffing. But <laughs> he did not say, yes, Dad, I have heart from Purana. He saw. Before Narasim Bhagavan manifest, he showed his form to Prahlad Maharaj. Yeah, yes, my Lord is there. <laughs> so my point is, everywhere the Lord is there, but why can't we see? When he manifests there, we cannot see, because he is covered by Yoga Maya Samabritam, Naham Prakasa Sarvasya. The another aspect of Yoga Maya is Mahamaya, mode of ignorance, mode of passion, mode of... Uh, uh, goodness that covers. Then what uncovers him? What makes us to see, make him visible? That also explains in Bhagavatam, Sattam Vishuddham Vasudeva Sabditam. Vasudeva. Who is Vasudeva? Huh? Who is Vasudeva? Krishna's father. Yes? Everybody knows. But we know only Vasudeva means Krishna's father. But why is Krishna's father? 
What is the meaning of Vasudeva? So that has been revealed in this verse, Satyam Vishuddham Vasudeva Sabditam. The meaning of Vasudeva, another meaning of Vasudeva is Shuddha Sattva, beyond the modes of material nature. Vasudeva is state where Puman Apabritam, that most hidden secret personality, is revealed by this energy, specific situation, Puman Apabritam, which is always hidden within the heart. Within all our heart, Vasudeva is there. But we are not in the state of Vasudeva level, Sudha Sattva Stara. That's why Krishna is not revealing. But Vasudeva uh, is revealed because the Sudha Sattva Stara. So that's why he's father of Krishna, because Krishna reveals in that state. So that's why uh, Krishna came uh, as Vasudeva, as father, uh, uh, as son of uh, Lord Vasudeva. So these are, these are the secret, confidential subject matter, not known to people. So that's why Krishna's appearance is very mysterious. No, Balaram's appearance also very mysterious. As you have heard, how Balaram first appeared in the womb of uh, Devaki. Then he was transferred to womb of Rohini. All this so much natak you know, happening there. <laughs> how people, people are bewildered. What is going on here? When Devaki was miscarriage uh, took place, then everybody crying, lamenting, consoled so externally. He lamented, so to everybody. But internally he is thinking, oh, this unseen sound vibration has said, the eighth son of Devaki will kill me. Just see how powerful I am. The seventh child, even before taking birth, out of fear of me, he died inside the womb. But he did not understand what is happening behind this scene. <laughs> Krishna saying, you want to cheat? Huh? I am the best cheater. Right? Isn't it? Krishna has to be best cheater, otherwise how will he keep us in track? So he is the best cheater. <laughs> Every scene you will see how he is cheating people. You know? He transferred Balaram, he is thinking constantly, oh, I am very no problem. So Balaram's appearance is very mysterious. The Krishna's appearance is extremely mysterious. So much mysterious. Krishna is known to everybody in India. All Hindu knows Krishna. They all know Krishna as son of whose son is he? Huh? Son of, no, outside people, they, you know, you know after coming to Iskana only. <laughs> but outside people, they all know Devaki and Vasudeva son. But everybody thinks that uh, Mother Yasuda gave birth to a girl and Vasudeva brought it and Kansa killed. But nobody knows in India, no Hindus, no Vaishnavs knows except followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that Mother Jasada gave birth to one boy and one girl. One boy and one girl. So when Vasudeva brought this Krishna, Vasudeva Krishna, then brought the girl back, Vasudeva Krishna merged into Nandanandan Krishna. That is, you will see, as long as Krishna in Vrindavan, always has 200 form. But when he went to Mathura and Dwaraka, how many hands he had? 400, Sankha Chakra Gadapadma, he exhibited. So these things are not known to people. Then somebody asked Maharaj, why this Natak is going on? <laughs> why Vasudeva Krishna took birth, then came to Nanda house, then merged together? Uh, that is because our Krishna, uh, he does not kill anybody, he is not involved with any, in, any creation, maintenance, annihilation, all he does, he plays with Gopa Gopis. Tumi Sarbe Sureshwara Brajandar Kumar, Tomar Ichai Bishwara Srijana Sangha. The Nanda Nanda Krishna, he has Icha Sakti, willing power. Vasudeva Krishna has Jnana Sakti. That's why always we say Om Nama Bhagavate, Krishna Nama, Gopala Nama. What do you say? Vasudeva Nama. He has Jnana Sakti. Then Kriya Sakti. Then Balaram is Kriya Sakti. So that's why Krishna, he will not do anything. Then who will kill these demons? That's a Vasudeva Krishna joining in Vrindavan, killing. So Krishna, he, he what is doing in 
in Golak Vrindavan. Someone will ask you, who is the God you are worshipping? What will say? Krishna. Right? Where is he staying? He is staying in Golak Vrindavan. What is he doing? Whole day grazing, grazing cows. Right? Whole day what he goes? Morning he leaves, whole day grazing cows he come back. You American people, you know or not, I don't know. But in India we know, who goes for grazing cows? In some village, somebody used for nothing. They say, okay, you go for grazing cows. Because you don't need any intelligence to grazing cows. There's one group of people, the cowherd people, called Gwala. Cowherd people. In Bengal, they say, the cowherd people, so dull head. Then eight years old, they got little intelligence. There's a saying in uh, proverb in Bengalese. Sometimes I think <laughs> that why Krishna, that he is Parameshwara, Paratpara Parameshwara, controller of all the Iswaras, he could not get any other business to do. Right? He could have done so many other jobs he has. <laughs> he is such a big controller, big office controlling this, that many things he could have done. Why did you choose for grazing cows? Of course, our Acharya is saying, <laughs> He chose this for grazing cows so that he'll go to forest and play around with all these coward girls. So that is very safe place for him, they say that. But I have considered, analyzed why Krishna chose this job of grazing cows because he's the most intelligent person. He thought, if I take up this job, then never I have to go for stress management. So all the all the stress he gave to Brahma, Vishnu, my son, big, big position. I am, I am simple boy. I just go for grazing cows. No stress management. So that is intelligence. <laughs> he delegated everything, all the headaches. <laughs> so that, uh, uh, no problem. <laughs> of course, when Lord, in Vishnu, he is maintaining the whole material world. But he is another form of Krishna. But Vishnu maintaining and managing, we are managing big difference. When we manage something, what happens? Janmashtami coming, now Shobhas Prabhu cannot sleep. She is telling me yesterday, oh Maharaj, I have to do this, do that, I have to make a meeting. So many, a daughter's marriage. If we manage something, we cannot sleep. We spend sleepless night. But when Lord Vishnu has to manage something, what he'll do, you know? All he goes sleep peacefully. <laughs> He sleep peacefully and everything is managed. So that is one level. <laughs> Krishna simply desires he manage. <laughs> Vishnu simply sleeps he manage. And all troubles we go through. <laughs> and we think we are the boss. I am the doer. The doing person, the man who is doing sleeping. And the person who is doing is getting the cows peacefully. And because of our false ego, and we are dying here, whole day and night. So we have to understand the Vedic philosophy is very deep. Jai Rikmani Krishna ki, Krishna Bhok Samad Bhagavatam ki, Gauda Pramanande. Thank you all so much. For the last many years I have not come to take darshan of Rukmani Dharataka this. But association of all of you, I am very happy to come. Subhas Prabhu, Subhas Prabhu allowed me to come and give class. I am very indebted to you. So, so I have some nourishing oil from this year, nourishing of his sake. So please come, I'll put on your head, then you can rub it, but after rubbing you get better smell. Smell put on your head, forehead. Jai. Nourishing Bhagavan ki. No book? No book? Haha, this year no book. No book? Oh, oh, oh I, I have another project I forgot to announce. So, I have one more project. We started, all of you know we are celebrating Janmashtami this year. Please, two minutes.